Welcome to UNV Academy. In this episode, we're going to introduce common alarms of different events. We will go into detail about motion detection, give you a brief introduction of tampering alarm, audio detection, alarm input and alarm output. Let's get started with motion detection. Motion detection detects moving objects in a specified area during a certain period. Under wall settings are two detection modes, grid and area. The camera is on grid mode with the whole area as the detection zone by default. Grid mode also allows you to draw irregular detection areas. Clear the grids of the whole view and draw the areas. To delete any of the areas, you can redraw them, then the grids will be cleared. The area mode allows you to specify up to four detection areas. Click the add button and drag your mouse to set a detection area in the window. The drawn box can also be dragged to an intended position. By moving the slider, we can set detection sensitivity as well as the object size. It is easier to detect a moving target with higher sensitivity. When the extent of motion within the detection area exceeds the set object size, the camera reports an alarm. Real-time detection results will be displayed in the chart below. The red lines represent motion detection alarms. The longer a line, the greater the extent of motion, the denser the lines, the greater the frequency of motion. Alarm parameters can also be set here. If we enter 15 in suppress alarm, the same alarm will not be reported within 15 seconds after an alarm is triggered. Trigger actions enable you to get notified by email message and alarm sound when an alarm occurs. For example, you can enable send email. Once the camera has been triggered, you will get an email notification. The options under storage mean that the recording and image and video will be saved to the micro SD card inside the camera and the FTP server that is configured with the camera respectively. Now we go to plan. The motion detection is all day on by default. To specify certain periods for motion detection, you can make a schedule here. The quickest way to set up a plan is to draw the schedule in the chart below. Click on armed and clear the armed schedule, then make a new schedule. You can also go to edit and enter the specific time to make a schedule. Save the settings you made. Then the camera reports alarms during the specified period we set only. Now let's move on to tampering alarm. With tampering alarm enabled, the camera reports an alarm when the lens is blocked for a certain length of time. You can set the sensitivity and the blocked duration below. When sensitivity is set to the highest, the camera can detect blocking from a farther location. Configure some trigger actions and make a plan for tampering alarm if needed. Next is audio detection. This function means the camera can detect input audio signals for exceptions, then reports an alarm and triggers the set actions. There are four detection types here, each can be configured with a difference or threshold value. When the rise or fall or change of volume exceeds the set limit, or when the input volume reaches the threshold, the camera reports an alarm and triggers the set actions. Set up trigger actions and plan if needed. Audio detection requires the camera to be connected to an audio input device correctly. Then turn on audio input on the alarm input page. Alarm input function enables the camera to receive alarm information from a third-party device. To use this function, you need to fill in the following information according to the type of the third-party alarm input device. Turn on alarm input and save the settings. Trigger actions and plan are also supported. After alarm output is triggered by an alarm, the camera can output alarm information to the third-party device if alarm output is set correctly. 
configure the rule settings or make a schedule according to your own needs. That's all for today's learning. Hope this will be helpful to you. Thanks for your watching. See you next time.